It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton back with you here live on Supply Chain Now Radio. Welcome back to the show. On today's show, we aren't broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. You probably hear a little bit of buzz in the background. We are at, uh, we're in Austin, Texas, where it is home of EFT's Logistics CIO Forum, a Reuters event, where we've been interviewing some of the most innovative thought leaders uh, that are doing big things across the end in supply chain industry. Uh, and want to welcome in my fearless, esteemed co-host here today, Greg White, serial supply chain tech entrepreneur, chronic disruptor and interrupter and trusted advisor. <laughs> Greg, how you doing? <laughs> interrupter, that's good. That's very appropriate. Well, we Don't have, try to finish your sentence. <laughs> See, I did it again. <laughs> we have really enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed the conversations we've had here. Yeah. Uh, EFT yeah, has put on a yet another home run event. And as we've talked about, this is really, there's been a lot of consistency in the quality of these interviews that we're, yeah. we're, we're having with these leaders. And the um, content that they're, I mean, that they are sharing um, amongst their colleagues and that they're receiving, um, you know, from other panelists and, and speakers Yep, as well. Yeah. We have really enjoyed it, and I think we're going to continue that trend. The hits keep on coming as we're going to welcome in our featured guest for this segment, Rob Turner, Partner Alliance Executive with Fujitsu. Rob, how you doing? Doing great. How about you, Scott? Doing fantastic. Great, great. Did I did I say that right? Yes, yes, you, you did. did. Fantastic. Feel, okay. feel free to use the acronym FCPA. Yeah. That's, I will. That, that works too. I've been known to get my kids' names wrong from time to time. It just I, depends I on the week we're having, right? Well, try typing Fujitsu fast, and I guarantee you, you get fumble fingers and uh, <laughs> spell checker comes on, and I'm like, oh, I got to correct it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for carving out some time. I know you've been busy. You had, you gave a great presentation earlier today that we've heard a lot of things about. It was packed, and we'll touch on that later on. Sure. But uh, thanks for carving out time to, sh- to share some of your insights with our Supply Chain Now Radio audience. So we want to start, Greg, like with all of our guests. Yeah. You know, our audience uh, really enjoys getting to know kind of who's here sitting with us, kind of the background, the backstory, the, the, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to, used to say. So we'll introduce everyone to who Paul Harvey is. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, man, you guys maybe, are dating yourself here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's some overlap. But Paul Harvey, one yeah. of a kind, Hall of Famer. Okay, so let's talk about. Um, Rob, tell us about yourself. Where'd you grow up? What, you know, what were some of the things you did? What, what, what? Uh, before you joined Fujitsu, what did your professional journey look like? Yeah, so um, a lot of people ask me that. Where are you from? And I always say, pick a place. So. Mm. Due to, uh, stepdad working for IBM. Um, oh, yeah. You guys know the joke. What did IBM yeah. stand for? I've been moved. I've been moved. And so <laughs> I went to 14 public schools. I've lived in Europe twice. I've almost moved to Brazil once. Mm. And, you know, it's uh, on, on going along with the family. And so I li- literally lived all over the, the U.S. and the world. Moved to Austin in 74. So mm. um, it's funny. I used to ride down Mopac, which is the main uh, north south corridor on my bike before it was you know before mm. it was finished mm. wow. heading down to the drag which if anybody knows austin well they'll say oh wow that guy's dating himself there <laughs> 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 but uh yeah so lived all over and, and stayed here went to the university of texas and then moved up to dallas mm. uh entered into the into the electronics business mm-hmm. um finally after you know some kind of low-level jobs ended up at pioneer in the storage industry. So they mm. used to sell optical drives and storage mm-hmm. libraries. And through that, got into the content management industry. And I've been in the content man- management industry for 25 years, mm. 16 of them with Fujitsu. So it's been, a, it's been a good road. This has been a good industry to be a part of. It's mm. been, um, as I mentioned in my, in my um, talk yes- mm-hmm. uh, yesterday, um, the one thing that, that's been interesting about this has been, you know, change. And mm. we've seen so much change. You know, content management document imaging used to be a nice to have. And now really for most industries today, content management and the tools that go along with it, it's a must have. Table stakes. Yeah, it really is. It, and, and so it's been interesting to see that change. It's also been interesting to see how the entire process has gotten more efficient over time. Mm. Yeah. So we'll dive more into that in a second. I want to talk about uh, two passions of yours, 
race car driving. Yes. Retired. Uh, retired race car yep. driver. Yeah. So w- what did you race? I raced uh, Porsches with PCA, uh, and then I raced Miatas with uh, an organization called NASA. What's PCA? Uh, PCA, Porsche Club of America. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm on, uh, and currently on Porsche number 14. So Really? Yeah. It's a, what a, model did you race? Uh, I raced 944 turbos. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Great cars. It, great car indestructible if you change out the belts and change the oil right and, and mm. just uh just a, right. a great platform and mm. very comfortable relative to a 911 <laughs> i have you know i've owned a 911 and i've owned four 944s in various guises wow. 944s 2944 turbos 968 yeah mm. so yeah sorry this is all geeky nah. car stuff but uh you know raced for a number of years and then finally after a minor accident at coda just down the okay. street from here yeah. And which I was able to fix. And then an engine meltdown at Hallett, which mm. is up in Oklahoma. My wife finally turned to me and she said, it's been 17 years. Uh, it's time to hang it up. Mm. Mm. So sold my, in, fixed it, fixed the race car, um, sold the entire package. That'd be trailer, race car, all mm. the gear, everything. The guy came and picked it up on my birthday. Ouch. And as he hooked it up to his pickup truck and drove it back to Florida, my wife turned to me and she said, you know, this is the best birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, honey. Yeah, this is the best yeah. your birthday yeah, ever yeah, for exactly. her. Yeah, for yeah, her. Yeah. 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 Um, and and so, then music. Yeah, right, let's hear about music. Because yeah. Austin, you know, I mean, yeah. you were keeping it weird before uh, keeping it, it weird was it, a thing. It really was. When I first moved here in, you know what, when I was, okay, as a kid in high school, not much activity in music. Mm. But I went and moved to Italy for a couple of years and played mm. in a, a, a good band in Italy for a long time and actually toured a bit. And then came back to go to UT, and one of my, the, my bandmates came with me. Oh. And we went to school together and just kept on playing. So we were really in the very early days of um, not so, punk, punk rock had already kind of morphed into some new wave and alternative. Yeah. And so we were really kind of riding that. So we, we played a lot of clubs here. We mm. played a lot of venues. It was, wow. it was a lot of fun. Very awesome. cool. So I play bass and sing and write. Still playing. Still playing, even after all these years. Awesome. I still have. So your wife didn't make you also sell your <laughs> yeah. bass no, on, no, on your birthday. <laughs> that one might that might cause some problems. Yeah, that one might cause some problems. Actually, I still have the bass I had custom made for me here in Austin. I still have it, and I had it built for me at South Austin Music down in Lamar mm. back in 1983. Wow. And they're still open. Wow. Yeah, so that's, mm. that's pretty cool. That is. So switching gears, let's talk about uh, the company again. Let's really dive into what it does at Fu- uh, Fujitsu. Tell, tell us about what the company does. Sure. So Fujitsu, you know, it's a pretty big company. Um, annual turnover, about $35 billion a year. Um, about 150,000 employees. 12, that's like a Euro- sorry, that's like a European turnover revenue yes. here can be some folks may not make that connection turnover yeah. Yeah. overseas is revenue, is revenue. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah yeah so in this case it's revenue and yeah. a lot of the terms we use sometimes the japanese use mm. terms that are a little bit closer to some what some of the europeans right. use. yep um and so it's a it's a fairly big company and uh we make a little bit of everything i always like to start off with air conditioners because we make air conditioners mm. we make lots of chips and circuits uh supercomputers us and Hitachi are always button heads and who mm-hmm. has the most massive supercomputer and mm-hmm. they're always one-upping each other and these things are the size of a small building and consume lots of power and require a lot of air conditioning, mm. which Fujitsu makes. Um, and then we also make document scanners, uh, which is the division I'm in. That's Fujitsu Computer Products of America, FCPA. Mm. And in that particular vertical, we are the dominant player. We've got about 50% market share globally, probably getting closer to... 57, 58% here in North America. Mm. Uh, in certain verticals, we're the dominant players. Healthcare, probably 80, 83% market share in healthcare. Pharmacy, probably 90%. Um, in, you know, if you look at what we do, uh, we give customers the tools to onboard paper efficiently into processes. Mm. Mm. And that really runs the gamut of, of any vertical, whether it's healthcare, government, logistics, supply chain, I mean, fill in the blank. Construction. I just had a realization Ooh, here. That's I, I, just, um, I just exited a company. Uh, we sold it to a large player who shall remain nam- nameless. Right. But we were in the middle of actually, um, actually integrating with you all. Yes. I just realized that. So we, what we did was um, workforce, uh, workforce management. So go there, do that, here's how you do it, that right. sort of thing. And some of those documents were on paper. And the documents that that we used, because we used geolocation, the documents that we used were often blueprints or right. 
or whatnot. So we were actually starting to integrate with that at the time that the company got sold. Construction's a perfect vertical. Um, that's actually one of the one of my projects. Also, <laughs> believe it or not, talk about getting off subject. Um, but think of this as the remote sites of you know construction sites. Right. They have to get content into a system, mm. just like a logistics you know, provider, just like right. anybody in supply chain has to get content into a system. Mm. And so in the case of this construction, they actually are focusing on this, this, this Fujitsu device because they can initiate a process by pushing one button. Right. And that's what they need in those kind of environments. Mm. Very ditto mm. going into, uh, in the logistics industry, where in the warehouse, there's a lot of paper that touch certain aspects of, mm -hmm. of, of, of you know, processing shipments. Right. And so it's the same thing. We recently went to a um, shipping logistics warehouse and we walked through their process. And the process was they logged into a big copier. They found their email. They put the paper in. They pressed a button. The, the, it sent it to the, that, those documents to their email. They then turned, logged into a computer, opened up their email, opened up that email, then detached it, put it into a folder, and then the mm. folder was imported to, into mm. the, whatever system was next. Mm. Now we replace that with a walk-up, push paper, push one button, goes right into mm. the system. Mm. So it saved them a massive amount of time. Mm. Yeah. And time is money and then time. some. And we prove the ROI based on mm. that. Mm. So let's, let's talk about your role. So sure. where do you spend your time and what is your favorite activity involved with your role? Yeah, so I launch new platforms into the market. So this this particular device we're talking about, it's a Wi-Fi scanner with a, a smart server that controls an entire fleet of these scanners. Mm. Um, that, that's My team has brought that to, to market. And we've worked with a number of, of companies to develop it direct integrations. We've got um, API level integrations so that now our scanner can talk, talk directly to the target application, mm. whether it's in our normal space, which is uh, content management capture, you know, and then with RPA and AI and workflow is kind of side tools. Sure. Or in, in this case, we would talk directly to, you know, some of the folks that are, that are you know, exhibiting here. Yep. And then from there, they can ingest that content and then surface it into a process so that it can be, you know, much more efficiently processed versus a manual where it's a lot of data entry, merging files, merging data, attaching, reattaching, and detaching, you know, uh, um, uh, documents from emails. It just makes this whole process easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's talk about um, what brings you here. Because sure. I think beyond, uh, you presented earlier, right. and we That's talked correct. about standing room only. Yes. Right? I think you even had some autograph requests. I did, after. yes, there, there were, yeah. I, so I te uh, beforehand, I always like to, to start off uh, any talk with a little bit of levity. I think sure. a little humor kind of sets things up. And so I talked about just how great Austin is and some restaurants people should try mm -hmm. and some bars that people should try and, and got some pretty positive things about that. So that's not really, you know, okay, I'm a great tour guide when it comes to Austin, but uh, really here's, here's the opportunity that we saw. We, um, Fujitsu, as a company is a big utilization. We utilize a lot of shipping, logistics, supply, and supply chain mm -hmm. capabilities because we sell a lot of stuff, right? So we've got relationships with some of the big players in this space. And so a series of conversations started internally. How do we spin that, those relationships into a business? Mm. And so based upon our you know, knowledge of some key companies, we're able to set up some meetings and really what we do call, what we, uh, do is called a site assessment. So we can go in and actually look at their, their paper flow, their paper processes, not only physically how they handle the paper, but what happens after it's been ingested into a system. Mm. And that's where we can offer a lot of um, both um, uh, consultative or prescriptive mm. um, uh, kind of uh, thought on, on how they can improve their processes. Sure. No shortage of, of capability, it seems like. You're, you're, you're helping the power, the digi uh, digitization of Say that industry. fast, say yeah. that fast three times. I need three more cups of coffee. Yes. Um, let's switch gears. I want to go broader, right? Okay. Um, when we think of the end-to-end -end supply chain industry, uh, and there's no shortage of trends and issues and developments. Yeah. I mean, in this global right. business environment, it's changing by the minute, right? Yes. What are some of the trends that are uh, taking place you know, globally end-to-end -end, that's on your radar more than others right now? Yeah, so it's interesting because it's been a... It kind of an uh, overarching theme mm -hmm. of this entire conference, and it's funny in that it well, it's digital transformation. Right. Yeah. So it's taking tools that can stitch systems and processes together, 
and um, I'll, I'll get into kind of more of the details, but just a little added levity. So I, I asked, I turned to the uh, the crowd yesterday, and I said, "So, do you all feel like uh, you've you've you know you've been beat over the head with with digital transformation?" And I said, "Well, guess what? The beatings will continue <laughs> until morale improves." And yeah. so I got a got a pretty good laugh on that. But so here's here's the trends that we see it. Um, there are so many systems that are out there that don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still it, and. We love to say that as much as your your vendors of whatever particular platform may tell you um, otherwise, you're never going to get rid of paper from your organization. You're never going to get rid of paper from your, your processes. Mm. And so how do we help companies make that process more efficient? We build scanners. We love paper. We love to see as much paper come in as possible. <laughs> Bet. But we also love to see paper come into a process efficiently. Mm. And that's where it's things like, um, what, what we kind of ubiqu ubiquitously, that's all uh, that's, yeah. word. that's as hard as yeah, Fujitsu. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> say, say Fujitsu ubiquitously <laughs> yeah. three times fast. So, um, uh, Capture. Yeah. So, Capture is uh, the, the, a, a platform that we use that, that ingests information. So, mm -hmm. Capture, for instance, can take a look. I've got a page sitting in front of me here, mm -hmm. and I may have certain key things, like maybe the date on it or slide one or slide two. Mm -hmm. And Capture would say, you teach it, and you say, go and find these things for me, mm. and then tell me what's to the right of it. Mm. So for instance, I could be looking for a customer ID, I could be looking for an invoice number, I could be looking for terms, I could be looking for all of these different elements mm. on mm -hmm. a document. Document doesn't have to be paper-based, it can also be born digital, right. and Capture can perform the same thing. So you may, for instance, get something that's detached from an email that's yeah. already been scanned or it's been you know just added as a PDF. The point is Capture can take these uh, unstructured elements and right. that's a big that's a big thing is yeah. this unstructured elements yep. of uh, information that's on pages and be able to extract it and make intelligent use of it smarter so yep. capture yeah smart capture smart yeah, smart yep. capture I like that and so that's, that's that's one thing you are tracking yes right? that's one thing we're tracking and then it's what do you do then all right so now i've captured that information now what do I do with it? Mm. All right, so I've got this, it, and I loved some of the comments in, 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 in these breakout sessions, and they were saying, okay, now that we've got the data, is it good data? Mm. Is it not good data? Is it too much data? Is it too little? So now what do we do with it? So now it's using tools like artificial intelligence, AI, or RPA, robotic process automation, which allow you to take information that you that is found on an, on a on a document or on a page or on whatever the content is and kind of fill in the blanks. So RPA for instance, it, this and in, in the shipping logistics industry, there's a lot of manual data entry mm -hmm. over and over again on the same, for instance, house bill, because you have to keep on filling that in. One system may require the information and another system may require the same information. Mm. And there's not necessarily a tool that allows you to do that, that mm. seamlessly. Yep. So a process like RPA would allow you to, using robots, say, fill in the blanks here, fill in the blanks here. Right. Ah, you found Translate this. Translate one right. to the other. Okay, I extracted this date on the page that's sitting in front of me, November 7, but I need you to fill it in here, here, and here, and that way my person doesn't have to go in and type mm. in 11 slides, or, or maybe, and potentially maybe in three different formats. Yeah. Mm. Right, so RPA does that, that all for you on the fly. Mm. So what it does is it eliminates those manual steps. Um, I love what one of the RPA com companies told me. They said that when I'm going and talking to a customer, I'll give them the first RPA process for free. I'll come in, I'll do the heavy lifting, I'll give it to them. And I'll let them play with it for about six weeks or eight weeks, and I'll come back in and say, so what do you think? And he said, almost always the conversation is- About a half is, dozen ideas. Yeah, the right. conversation is, okay, that was awesome, let's go to the next one. And mm -hmm. he said, I, you know, it's like fishing, and he, you know, <laughs> reels them in. Yeah. So another one, you know, is, is, is AI, which is our, our tools that allow you, or allow the software to learn, you know, different different aspects of, mm -hmm. of, the, of content and documents. Mm -hmm. Right, so and that, actually, learn yeah right? and it, actually learn. I mean it it continues to improve its body of knowledge it does. and therefore every time it sees something that's right. exactly right so AI then would allow you to take that unstructured content mm -hmm. and then structured document uh, and and over time learn what it is so that maybe after the third okay I'm making this up but maybe after the third time it sees this document it says ah, I know this okay I need to go grab these ten things off this one and I'm gonna move them move these three things over into an RPA process because we need to fill in the blank and mm -hmm. I need to move these 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 three things over into a workflow yeah so all of these things they all tie together mm -hmm. um, they're all you know 
related. It, it, they're related. They're maybe not cousins. For the, they're like they're dirt may, cousins. It, they're maybe not for the faint of heart because yeah. these are also, you know, it's not like where you install this thing and you flip a switch and they 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 go. Right. I mean, there's some. Um, it's um, getting there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is AI there. and blockchain solutions like that. The, mm-hmm. I mean, they are already becoming commoditized right. because the, some, the, yes. there are in some cases very strong business cases where people have identified this is where you need to use it and you can pre-build a that's learning correct. device right? that's correct and then employ it for your specific need but but it it addresses a very general a, a more general type of business problem right right and, and it's interesting in that and i mentioned this earlier and that's where some of these software guys that are building these smart tools are some of them have a consultative business practice where they'll go and they'll look at a really big ecosystem and say, we can do this here, here, and here. Mm. And other guys are coming and saying, no, I believe in a prescriptive business practice where I know this is what you're seeing and I know mm-hmm. this is what you're doing and I already have this built. Mm-hmm. So, and then there's some guys that are kind of blending the two and just based upon, you know, opportunity, but then there's also price. Mm. So prescriptive would tend to be MVP a little bit less because it's already pre-built versus consultative where I've got to build out more stuff. Right, you've got to build the learning mechanism. Right. So we're looking, trending in all all the, you know, all those different things were really the reason we're here is about um, explaining how Fujitsu can be a part of a digital mm. transformation strategy, but also there's partners that are here that we work with and in, in being able to tell that story to a broader audience about how all these capabilities come together. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Uh, uh, a highly more connected world. Business yeah. world, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. these tools are not, they just don't have to be internal, right? Right. And that's one of the ideas is that we can surface this content and make it external to your, you know, your, your supply chain partners and ultimately to your customers. Mm-hmm. Customers want access to data 24 by 7. Transparency. By three, yeah. They want yeah. transparency. Every, you know, Visibility. always on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And anytime, to your point, you know, when executives get up at, at 2 a.m. because they've got that burning, they want, you know, response and, and service and visibility right then. Right. Um, all right. So kind of as we, we, we start to bring the interview to a close, any, any other trend when you look at what's going on across the, the supply chain universe? Anything else really stick out more than others right now? Sure. Yeah, obviously, mobility is a big mm-hmm. one. And even with our products, there's still there are some mobility uh, elements. Um, everybody wants to be able to run things off their smartphone, off their tablet. Mm-hmm. And even Fujitsu, which is we're tried and true, take a USB cable, plug it in from the scanner, plug it mm-hmm. into a PC. Even we realize that's not the direction that, that the world is going. So we're starting to build tools where we can drive an entire scan capture process from your smartphone, mm. still utilize the device because right. a phone is good to take maybe one, maybe two pictures of a, of a document. But if you've got a stack like this, I've got 12 pages in front of my hand, try to scan that with your phone. Mm. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as a sample, I, I, I did it, right, as to try it. It took me 30 minutes mm. to get the lighting and shadowing correct, right. and they still didn't look good. Right. And then there's tools that we have um, that we can actually deploy out in the cloud now mm. where we can clean up those shadows and bad images. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're looking at building out tools where you can initiate a scan from a device, scan the entire batch, and then have it end up in the, um, you know, in, in the cloud or on prem. Securely. Cleaned up. Uh, all, all from initiated from, from your phone. So Love we it. think that from a supply chain perspective, if any time content needs to get into a system, mm. we can take, uh, we can pretty much take it any, you know, any place, anywhere, anytime. Okay. Fascinating. We, we could, this could be a six-hour episode. I, mean, it, I know you all have got your fingers in a lot of different things, but how can folks learn more? Where, where do folks go to learn more about the company, and how can they connect with you, Rob? Sure, yeah. So um, our company website is www.f for Fujitsu, C uh, for computer, P for product, A for America.com, mm. so fcpa.com. Um, there's a lot of information, a lot of white papers, uh, a lot of case studies. Um, you know, there's you know, good Might information there. Might be a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as uh, on me, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, just uh, search Rob, Robert Turner on, you know, Fujitsu, and I should pop right up. And uh, I think I'm the only Robert Turner at Fujitsu, so that should work out. What's the chance of that with yeah. 130,000 employees? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, there's another Turner, but not uh, Robert. Not a Robert. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Is he related? Uh, no, not related. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. There was two Robert L. Turners in my high school class. And so people used to laugh and say, you don't look brothers. I'm like, yeah, brothers from different mothers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we've been talking with Rob Turner, Partner Alliance Executive with Fujitsu. Really uh, I heard a lot of good things about your breakout session. Thanks Thank for kind of taking yeah. uh, some time with us. 
to, to share as much as you can in a nutshell. It's tough to cover it in is. 25 minutes' yes, time. It is. But uh, thanks for, for sharing a lot of that. Thank you. Greg, really enjoyed this interview. Yeah. Uh, our coverage continues here at this event. Um, it, this event's kind of in a, in a class all to itself. It is. You know, I, I think I said this in one of our other discussions is you come to these events, they can be really, really very strong mm. content wise and, and learning opportunity wise and or they can be not nearly as strong. This is definitely one of the strongest ones I've seen and I've been to a lot yep. of these type of events. Really have enjoyed it. To our listeners, stay tuned as we continue our coverage on the EFT Logistics CIO Forum, which is now, Greg? It is now a Reuters event. Yep. Kudos to the EFT team for yeah. growing and growing and growing. And uh, to our listeners, you can also check out our other upcoming events, replays of our interviews, other resources at supplychainnowradio.com. Greg, where can they find us? They can go to YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from. That's right. Apple, Apple. Podcasts. Sorry. That's okay. I'm the chronic. Yeah, director. no, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's where we both, that's where we overlap. Yeah. <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Cast. There are hundreds of them out there now. Mm. But wherever you get them from, that's right. Listen up. On behalf of the entire team here, uh, this is Scott Luton wishing you a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Radio. Thanks, everybody.